I read in the Consuming Instinct, your your other book, chapter four, that younger siblings like me, yes, youngest of four, are more likely to be creative. Oh, you 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 pulled that one out. Okay. So does that mean that if we're more likely to be creative, and creativity is associated with happiness in the in the way that you just described, that I am happier than all of my siblings? <laughs> Do you want to guess what Doctor Sad's sibling order is? You're the youngest by far. So let me let me explain. Let me step before I answer that and the way you frame the question. Let me explain what the mechanism is. Okay. I also just want to add one layer to that as well. I was sat with, at a dinner the other day with my um, with about ten of our directors, really they're founders of companies essentially, and I, I thought it would be interesting to go around and ask them because I've started to form a bit of a picture about this. And I went round the table and asked every single one of them where do you rank in order of siblings. And eight of them ranked as the youngest sibling. Oh, I love I it. That was so crazy. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. That's psychology. So let me tell you the background to that theory, okay? Which I've done my own research on and published work on it. But the original theory comes from Frank Soloway, who's a historian of science, who wrote a book, which I highly recommend to all your viewers. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit technical, but you can get through it. It's called Born to Rebel. It's a book that explores historically the, 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 the people who've generated the biggest breakthrough radical scientific innovations and what was their birth order. And it turns out, not unlike how you did it with the 10 and eight of them were last born, out of the 28 most radical scientific innovations ever posited, 23 out of the 28 were the, the last born, the later borns. Now, so then the question is, okay, well, fine, that, that's just a phenomenon, but what explains it? Now, the explanation is mind-blowing. You ready? So Frank Soloway argued that typically when we study the psychological effects of birth order, it's from the perspective of the parent's behavior to the child as a function of their birth order. First child, I'm very strict. Second child, I'm getting tired. Fifth child, run the streets, I don't give a shit. Okay, so that's the causal causality of the birth order effect. He flipped the whole thing. He said, no, no, no. Much of the impetus of the birth order effect is coming from the child, and let me explain how. He said that one of the fundamental survival problems, it's an evolutionary theory, one of the fundamental uh, survival problems that a child faces is to differentiate itself from all other siblings to, to etch maximal investment from the parents. How do I do that? So that's called the Darwinian niche partitioning hypothesis. When you start off your firstborn, all of the niches are unoccupied. There is the, I'm a good boy niche. I'm a rebel niche. I'm a di right there, there are many, many, there's a panoply of niches that are unoccupied. So I'm firstborn. I'm going to pick whichever one. The second born is born. There is N minus one niches. One is taken. So the I'm a good boy niche. I got to differentiate myself. I'm second. I'm an asshole niche. I'm a, I'm a contrarian niche. Let's keep going down the birth order. There are fewer and fewer unoccupied niches left for later borns, especially if the sip ship is big. Soloway argued that that forces the last born to score differently on key personality traits, one of which is open to experience. So he argued that later borns, up to last borns, by virtue of having to solve that original problem, will end up being much bigger out-of-the-box thinkers, not being stuck on conformity, on orthodoxy. Hence, in the context of scientific innovations, the last ones are the ones who say, no, nah, this is bullshit. I'm going this way. Okay? Mm. And so I tested that theory in a consumer psychology setting where I demonstrated that last borns were much more likely to be product innovators and early product adopters. So I, I took the exact framework, but instead of applying it to radical scientific innovations, I applied it to radical product innovations and adoptions. Mm -hmm. So so all that to say that based on that, one could surmise that if openness to experience 
is correlated to happiness, then the latter borns would score happier. I really wonder which one it is, because I can attest to kind of both being true. I probably was a little bit rebellious to get attention, but also by the time I was 10, the same rules didn't apply to me. When you said- How many are you? There's four. Okay. When you said run the streets, that's the perfect ex- explanation of my childhood. <laughs> my my oldest, the oldest, which is my sister, Amanda, she, if she wasn't at home by 9 p.m., she was also a woman, so the rules were slightly yeah. different for her. 9 p.m., it was, it was hell to pay. If I didn't come home for two to three days, <laughs> there was no one there to ground me anyway. And I think that l- opens you up to experimentation. You start yeah. fiddling with stuff. You start I, st- I was doing all kinds of things in the house, like breaking things apart, looking inside them, starting little businesses, selling the cigarettes from my mum's room. Sorry, mother, she really doesn't know that I ever did that. But <laughs> all these kinds of things, which started to build this, you know, repository of information, but also it built my confidence yeah. in a way which allowed me to be entrepreneurial and develop this different relationship with risk. So it's hard to figure out which one it is. Maybe it's both. It's probably both. I, I think it's a bit of both. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, I haven't been, I, I know that your team had asked me, what are some questions that we could ask that no one else? Well, Certainly pulling up that birth order one, you've succeeded on asking me a question that I certainly haven't been asked in a long time. So kudos to you. Well, yeah, it's incredible. We have a lot of great researchers. So, By the way, both my wife and I are last borns. So to to the assortative mating, and I'm not sure if that's been done. And if it hasn't been done, it'd be very easy to do, right? So here's an experiment. Mm. If anybody steals it, I better get the credit. You just look at a thousand marriages calculate their satisfaction score, their happiness score, and then see if there is a sort of mating on birth ownership. Interesting. Boom. There's there's your thesis for your undergraduate psychology degree, which you will pursue and send me an email that I deserve the credit for having forced. Couldn't I life. just run this as a advert on social media as a survey? And, and so I can get a link, run it as a Facebook meta ad at people and say, um, are you married? If they say they are. I'll say, how long have you been married? They'll say, how long? I said, are you and your partner, where do you rank in terms of birth order? Oh, and then I can get the stats. Absolutely. So many studies now, scientific studies, are conducted online. And they can be conducted online in exactly the way that you said. You use existing social portals to have a big wave of data collection. But there are other ways, by the way. You could Have you, have you heard of mTurk? No. So mTurk is a platform where people sign up to be participants, right? Now, let's say I'm a researcher and I say, I want men over 18 years old, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, that's easier to get than if I were to say, I want men who are over 18 years old, shorter than six feet and from Lithuania and they're diabetic. Now, depending on how I structure my criteria of inclusion, Mm -hmm. the price that I have to pay for getting those participants will go up, Yeah. right? Of course. So if I'm running a study, I just need male and female adults to run a study on this task. It ends up being a few cents. And so it has opened up the velocity at which we can do research, scientific research, not just stuff I post on Twitter, mm. scientific research. It has increased it tenfold. So, so you can certainly do we'll that. We'll do it. So we will, I set this as a challenge to my research team and our data science t- team, which is to run a survey on social media using adverts, so digital adverts, Facebook ads, meta ads, um, X ads, whatever. And the survey should basically seek to answer first their gender, their marital status, ask what birth order they fell in, and then ask what order their birth, their marital the partner, partner yeah. fell into. But then also understand how long they've been together because we want to check these marriages are legit. Absolutely. And well, I'll put uh, it on the screen. That'd be so cool. And please share with us. Yeah. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously, and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.